G'day, and welcome to part three of the large ship design tutorial mini series. We've just finished welding up most of the armor that we put down last time, and if you have a bit of a look at the front, there's this pointy, sticky outy bit, and I'm not a big fan of it. It's just not quite blending with the rest of the design, so I think we're going to have to revise that. So we could replace the 45 degree angle slope with part of the 2x1x1, by one by one, but I think when we do that it still has the same problem. It still feels like this part of the ship is an extra bit. It, we could either make this into something special and make it like a mushroom cap on top, or what I prefer to do is try and blend it with the rest of the design. So maybe if we actually use the whole 2x1x1 two by one by one slope but have it taper towards the front of the ship. We'll just grind off those 2x1x1 two by one by one tips that are attached because they'll fall to the ground if we don't. And then we can try this thing out. I can already see a problem with this though. It's going to remove that mirroring of the thruster cone that I was talking about previously. So we're probably going to have to follow along with what we've done along the top ridge and just put cubes directly against the thrusters. Otherwise these lines are going to be broken up and that's not really the design I'm going for on this build. So if it means getting rid of an idea that we previously liked, yeah, so be it. We've got to go with what's working now and what's working with the whole design. From this distance, I reckon that looks a whole lot better. So I'd say let's mirror it on the other side and then we'll move on to the next bit. If we move on down to the back of the ship, you can see an area where once we've built the third row of blocks, we're gonna have this big flat area that tapers towards the rear thruster. I don't like that big flat area or the idea of having it, so we need to think of a solution. We could break it up vertically, but I think most of our lines in this ship are following from the front all the way down to the back. Of course there are those ribs along the hydrogen tanks, but generally speaking we've got these flowing lines. So I'd like to continue that idea. And one way we could do that is by bringing out the middle row of those blocks. And that's currently the lower row, but if you imagine the bottom row is there, it's the middle one. So if we grind that down and we actually just step it back one block further, we'll break up all those potential flat spaces and keep the flowing lines going. Sadly, I've run out of hydrogen, so I'll be back in a second. And now that we're flying again, we can start building that offset row. I don't want these a complete block out from the center of the ship, but I want them offset a block toward the rear of the ship. We'll need to grind down the existing armor and uh, some of the other armor was directly attached to this. Let's clean that up and get on with this making sure that the replacement armor is properly attached to the rest of the ship so that we don't do this again, we can continue towards the rear. When we're getting to the 45 degree slope bits, we could try having the 45 degree slope join up with the other ones, but I don't think that's going to look as good. I think we should continue this offset row the whole way back to the hydrogen thruster. So let's step it out one more and see how that looks. Quickly fill in a few gaps deep into the armor. Finish off the last few bits of that row. And yeah, I definitely think this works. We've got a nice line that continues all the way from the reverse thrusters at the very front of the ship, right down to the rear of the ship where the large thruster is. I'm really happy with this. I think that turned out quite well. Looking around the large thruster, I don't think there's anything else we should add. Having some of the fuel lines feeding to it could be a look that works. We'll have to check it out later. But for now, I think we leave it and we'll move on to trying to build more of the roof of the cockpit. For this bit of the roof, I want to see if there's a way we can form a line that goes from this bit we've just raised and edges towards the thruster in the center. Because I think having it run as a stripe, just in a straight line, will end up making the ship look a little bit like a, well, 
a bit of a zebra crossing. And not a look I'm going for at this time. If we tried to use the 2x1x1 slopes, they're not going to actually cover up the ceiling and it'll create us problems later. But maybe we can get away with the 45 degree slopes? Or even using the corner and inverted corner pieces. With these though, I'm seeing a bit of a problem. It's going to be very hard to make it airtight around the reactor. Maybe we've made it go one block too close to the center, so if we bring it back... We could try just using normal slopes to come down this way. If we plop those down, that should seal the top of the reactor area. And then if we add the cube blocks against that, it'll create an idea of a line joining up those two. Then we can add an inverted corner piece at the top. Although, with that there, it might look a bit funny without having an extra slope going toward the front of the ship. So we can put that slope in and then put a corner on. And with that all together... Hmm. I think once we weld this up, this is not going to be a great look. So, let's just scrap the whole thing. It looks like we'll have to come up with another idea. Now, this isn't such a bad thing. We tried out something, we figured out it's not going to work with our current design. So, rather than get upset, we can go, yeah, that didn't work. What else can we use? We could use paint. We could try the line idea, but do it an extra block higher. So we'll just move away from the roof for a moment. If we hop down into the cockpit area, I'm beginning to get convinced that the reactors are definitely not airtight. The game does give you a pretty good guide. If something looks airtight, it usually is, and those things don't look airtight. So we might be able to get our airtightness achieved by putting in some armor blocks around it in behind it. Hopefully this will work. If it doesn't, we'll have to come up with some other solution later. So if we pop a few of those in behind the reactor and replace this bit of conveyor tubing with a conveyor junction, hopefully that'll do the trick. Well, in theory, I've got all of the sides of the reactor covered, so hopefully it'll be airtight. I probably will be wrong on that one, but we'll find out soon. Hopefully, maybe. We'll have a bit of a careful look and yeah, definitely all sides are covered. So let's go back to the roof. With the roof, I had a lot of trouble starting where I was before, so maybe we'll start at a different bit. We know we've got this recessed bit above the cockpit window, so why don't we start there? If we put a normal slope just above it and then and then put down our 2 by one by one slope where we were going to have it before, it might give us the inspiration or the information we need to figure out how to join those two bits up in a way that's going to be aesthetically pleasing. Well, hopefully it'll make it better than what we'd had before anyway. With those down, let's extend towards the rear, and I think having a bit of a taper on the central bit with a 2 by one by one slope towards the thruster might work. And do we want to make this elevated another block? You know what? I don't think we do. I think if we add any extra bits above on the cockpit without adding an extra function to them, they'll just look tacked on. And I'd prefer to avoid that. So let's just go with a flat roof for now. I'm imagining that the lines that we wanted to add will be there later when we paint it. So the parts of the roof that aren't yet built, I want to make look similar to each other, but different to the existing parts. And we'll do that by using two by one by one slopes at the start and possibly at the rear of it. I haven't decided that yet, but definitely at the front of these bits. And we'll line them all up perfectly with one another across the front of the ship. While you're building armor like this, it can be helpful to keep an eye out for blocks that you might not be able to reach later. 
duck in there, weld them while you're going, just in case, because it's a pain in the backside if you have to do it later. Grinding more stuff down and having to re-remember what you ground down and fix it all. Best avoided. And now for the next challenging bit. How are these going to taper around the engine? We could try making a couple of bits stick out past where we're at and then put a slope in to make this line physical, not just painted. Actually, that's not going to work. Let's bring through from the front all of the blocks we need so that we can get a better idea of how this is all going to play out. So we'll make these bits just flat all the way through and then put a 45 degree slope at the end. I think that'll cover up the conveyor nicely. If we pop the one on the other side. Yeah, I'm happy with that look. Now we've got to get rid of that bit we extended out before. And if we replace it, not with a 45 degree slope because then that'd match the bit that's the flat part. I want it to look different because this is that line that we're going to taper in. If we use the large part of the 2 by one by one slope, maybe that'll work. Well, I think that's actually worked out pretty well if I say so myself. Now it's time for doubling up and mirroring this on the other side. I'm going to skip through all of that and I'll see you back when it's done. Or sooner if I make an amusing mistake along the way. Ow! Aww, oh, I really should have been keeping a closer eye on my hydrogen. And this is why you take a med bay with you if you take a large ship away from your base. It's a long schlep if you have to figure out a way to get back to your ship. And you'd want to hope that you've either got an antenna that's broadcasting at that range, or a GPS waypoint where you were already. So basically, don't do what Dunny Don't does. Keep hydrogen in your tanks and keep yourself alive. With a new clone and, well, nearly everything welded up, let's finish off the bottom of the ship. It's something I might have sort of forgotten up until this point, but it is an area you'll see more than you might think, so it does deserve a little bit of effort at least. We can take a lot of our design cues from the top of the ship. It could almost be identical, we would just have to work out how we're going to manage the landing gear that's sticking out of it. But I'll make it similar, but I always like to make it slightly different where it makes sense. I like to give landing gears a bit of a solid base to them and do things like that. So first off, let's prepare what we need to do. We'll fill in these holes in the ship that are currently here. We'll make sure that wall is complete over the hydrogen tanks. And then we can start off by doing the easy bit, which is matching to the side of the ship where we were planning on having the inset, then the outset, then the inset rows of blocks. One thing to note while we're building the underside of this ship is that Space Engineers doesn't require you to land on landing gear. You could just as easily have your own custom designed skids or other sort of landing mechanism that's made out of heavy armor blocks. You'd have a similar tolerance to crashing into the ground with those, but you could then have a design that's totally different. The thing you'd lack by not having landing gear is you'd have no way to lock onto a surface. That's what they provide that other things don't. If you've got landing gear, you can lock onto another ship. When the game isn't bugged out, you can lock onto voxels. And this can be really useful, particularly the ship locking with the way it functions now, where you can have a small ship lock onto a big ship, jump out, pilot the large ship, and the small ship will come along without stuffing up your trajectories and your physics so that you'll still be able to fly the large ship normally and it shouldn't have any problems with the small ship exploding. Which used to happen quite frequently in older builds. And it was events like that where things exploded wildly or landing gear flung ships all over the place 
that led to the rise of Clang. And if you've ever read any of the forums, Reddit, or anything on Discord, you see Clang mentioned all the time. Basically, it's anything in Space Engineers that goes kaboom because the physics went and freaked out. With the design of the underside of the ship, I've avoided the 2x1x1 slopes. I've tried to use a few more of the 45 degree angle ones. It's kind of a design thing I try to do sometimes where for an underside because it's then harks back to you know real world aircraft and ships and things like that where one surface of the vessel is quite different to the other surface when you're comparing top and bottom I like to have that differentiation and I feel that it can work quite nicely having things a little more square underneath if you've got a quite sleek top but that's only for the types of designs that I'm talking about where you're usually building things slightly industrial or slightly rough. If you're going for something sleek, it may work better to have it mirrored and have it perfectly sleek on top and bottom. It'll depend on the design really. But for this one, we'll go with something a bit sharper and more angular on the bottom. Something that looks a bit more robust. Um, and to me, that reads something that's a bit less finessed. The spots where I have used the 2 by one by ones those are so that we can do that same idea of having the lines flowing down the ship that we'll have visible on top once we colour it. We can do the same underneath, following those same guides when we go to the colouring stage. At this point we've laid down all of the armour blocks on one half of the ship. All that remains for the outer armour is to match the right hand side of the ship to the left hand side of the ship. So we'll jump ahead now to the next bit where we have to actually come up with some new design ideas. And while we're jumping ahead, we'll manage to weld everything as well. With all the armor welded, you can get a pretty good idea of how the ship's looking. And I gotta say, I'm actually reasonably happy with how this turned out, particularly as this was only really the second time I'd attempted a design like this. But we still are missing one thing. While we haven't designed the interior, the exterior is still missing an antenna. So, maybe we'll finish the inside or, actually no, what we'll do, we'll place the antenna on. Now, we've got to think about where we're going to place this. The antenna is quite a large block, but it's one you can't place early on because it's almost always going to be tacked onto the outside of the ship. Do we want a giant tall antenna sticking off the top of the ship? Do we want to build a little recess for it into the roof of the ship? or into the bottom of the ship? Or can we somehow put it inside the inner part of the U at the front of the ship? And I think that's what we might do. There's a double block where the equivalent on the other side has the door and the ramp, where we could put the antenna and it'd sit nicely there. When you're placing antenna on your own ship, if you're building in survival, you'll probably be hesitant to place more than one particularly as antennas can use up a lot of power, but also for the resources and the number of trips you might need to take because radio components are quite large. But if you think the design's going to be worth it to have an extra antenna, just remember you can just switch these things off so the power requirements won't be an issue. So once you have actually built it, the effort's done and if it makes your design look cooler, I say go for it. The effort's worth it. You can also make something that looks like a much larger antenna if you use semi-constructed pillars. A few of these tacked onto one another with a couple of antennae around it looks like a giant antenna. And you can use semi-constructed wheels as circular parts within those larger antennas. So you can make a really cool antenna array at the front of a very large ship if you want that way, where an antenna of this size would probably seem too small. And with the antenna out of the way, let's get onto the inside of the ship. Let's test this airlock and make sure that it's airtight. When you're looking at an air vent, you can tell whether an area is pressurizable, pressurized, or depressurized. If it's yellow, it means the space isn't closed off and it can't pressurize. If it's green, it's pressurized. If it's blue, it means that it's been depressurized. We've closed the doors, but 
This vent still shows yellow, so there must be a hole somewhere inside the cockpit area, which is what I was afraid of when we were designing it. The two most likely culprits for this are going to be the refineries or those reactors like I thought might be a problem. I'm pretty sure I managed to build enough of a cube of armor around each, but maybe I missed a spot. There doesn't seem to be anything in the control panel that could explain what's going on. It all seems to be fine. So we've definitely got an air leak somewhere. We are definitely going to need to fix that air leak before we can take this up into space. I don't want to rely on my suit's oxygen supply while we're out there. So while we have a bit of a think about how we might solve that, Let's get this airlock set up fully. And that means setting up this button panel so that we can at least control both doors from it and most importantly, control the air vent. The doors are easy to control without the button panel, but the air vent's a bit of a pain. So what we need to do is figure out which door is which so that we can set up the buttons properly. And once we figure them out, we'll label them correctly as the outer door and the inner door so we can put them in a sensible position on the button panel. My feeling on that would be put the button closest to the door that it activates. The easiest way to figure out which door is which in vanilla is close both of them, go into the menu, activate one of them to open, see which one's open, then you know which it is. This works for small bits of design and as such it's usually a good idea to label these things as you're building them if you're building a very large ship. Otherwise, it'll become incredibly confusing and particularly with lights, if you're changing colors and things, you want to label these things early rather than trying to figure it all out later. It all sounds very boring and sensible and oh, it is so boring and sensible, but it is so much less boring than having to grind them all down later and do it anyway because you couldn't figure out which light was which. There are some mods that will help with this, but I still think it's a good habit to get into. I just want a very simple button set up here. So one button will open and close the outer door. One button will pressurize and depressurize the airlock. And the last button will open and close the inner door. There are some pretty cool airlock setups out there, but we're not going to go into those in this tutorial. Now that that's mostly set up, let's go back to that original problem of our actual cockpit not being pressurizable. So, We've identified two possible culprits for our lack of air tightness, and that's the refinery and the reactors. So we only wanted to be able to access the reactors in an emergency setting where we've run out of all fuel and we need to chuck some ingots into the system without coming up with some other more complex way of doing things. So if we create a little room that closes off that area from the main cockpit that we only access in an emergency, that will help prevent that bit from affecting our air tightness. And if we also move the med bay a block closer to the control station and put a wall in front of the refinery, that should close that bit off. And then the final reactor we can just close off entirely because we only need access to one to get the ship up and running if we run out of fuel. It's worked out kind of convenient that we built such a big cockpit area because that means it gives us the flexibility to make these sorts of adjustments. We'll put in a few slope blocks just over this reactor, cover it up, which will also allow us to still have access to the small cargo container. And now we need to move the med bay. Med bays have a lot of big components, so we probably don't have enough room about in our inventory to carry the whole thing. So we'll throw a few things into the small cargo container, which should make enough room since we're on times 10 inventory to fit the whole of the med bay. This is one of the small upshots of doing design this way where you've got a mostly functional ship, it means you can temporarily use the ship to help your design process. We'll clear out the rest of this space so we know exactly what volume we've got to work with to create that little room for the reactor access. And then we can start building the walls. We'll just use simple cubes at first and if we can stylize it a little bit later, we'll add those in. This has a couple of requirements. We need to make sure we've got an access port so that we can hook the med bay up to the hydrogen and oxygen system once we've put it back down again. So we can leave a spot up in the top corner for a conveyor junction. And we also need a door. Other than that though, it's pretty much just whatever fits in this space.
Looking at the space beside where we put that conveyor port, I'm not sure that putting the med bay straight underneath it is going to really work. There's only one orientation we can have it, and it would prevent us putting any sort of styling in front of the refinery. So we might see if we can put it near the main vent for this area. It might fit a bit better there and we can kind of put the conveyor system through the other wall of the little room. Yeah, that might work a bit better. So we'll grind through immediately above the access port on the med bay. We'll be able to put a nice elbow piece of conveyor tubing there. And then we'll have to figure out how to join up the conveyor junction that's forming the wall with the conveyor system in the rest of the ship. I'm going to use two straight pieces of conveyor tubing. Now this doesn't immediately make sense because we could easily just put an elbow in and connect straight onto the reactor, but that's exactly what we don't want to do. We want to leave that reactor accessible from the outside. So if we put straight tubing right down to the other end, we can replace that elbow piece with a junction and we'll still be able to access the reactor if we ever completely run out of power. And now let's jump ahead to where this is all nicely welded and finished. With everything welded up, there was a small thing missing, an oxygen tank. We just put in a nice straight section of conveyor tubing, so seems like a good thing to remove and replace with the oxygen tank. And that's exactly what we've just done. That's in this little small room, that's our reactor access. Hopefully we've now got an airtight space and yes, the vent has lit up green. Problem is fixed. Don't know what the problem was, but I don't really mind. I kind of like having the refinery covered up from the inside and having those little beveled edges and corners and things everywhere. So whichever the problem was, it's fixed, it's done. We've got an airtight cockpit. That's what we were after. And now we can just go around the space and finesse the little bits and pieces until we're happy with how it all looks. There are some edges that I think we could possibly improve on maybe replace a few bits here and there with cutaway corners or slopes. And I'm kind of liking this feel of all these sharp edges and angles leading everywhere. To me it almost feels like the ship internal design fits the actual design process. That the internal space was built to fit within what was already existing in terms of the ship's function that had to be there which is kind of exactly what happened. We did do it as an afterthought, and I sort of like that that's happened. So that episode ended up being a little bit longer than the previous ones. We're very close to finishing this design. I'd be interested to find out if any of you have noticed a critical ship system that we will have to build in the last episode where we go and take this thing up to space. What have I missed? It's something I miss so often. I'll have the video up really soon, but if any of you can pick it before then, I'd love to hear what your answers are. See you then.